Hi, I'm Martin and I'm here with Steve and this is a Property Hub University course on how to recycle your capital. So what will you learn today? We're going to look at who this strategy is right for. We're going to find out how you can recycle your cash. We're also going to focus on how to fund the purchase for this strategy. We're going to focus on how you can add value to a property. We're going to look at how to find the right property in the first place. And finally, we're going to focus on anticipating the risks with this strategy. Let's run through a quick example using £100,000 in cash. So you buy a property for £90,000 and you then spend £10,000 improving that property so that it's as nice as the house next door. The house next door recently sold for £133,500. So now when your property is revalued, it gets the same valuation. This means you can now borrow 75% of £133,500 which is £100,000. You now get all the money you started with back. Plus, you keep the property uh, you've just worked on. You now have a property that will provide you with rental income and the chance for further capital growth. And you'll still have the £100,000 you started with. So you can now just do this again and again. So now you know how you can recycle your capital and how it can supercharge your portfolio growth. Take the quiz to cement your learning and move on to the next module. Chances are you may not have £100,000 in cash or you just don't want to commit that much capital into one property. So there are other options for you. First option is using a mortgage. So you can technically use a normal mortgage to buy the property and then switch lenders after your refurb. But in reality, lenders don't like you doing this. This is because a mortgage is designed to be a long-term loan. Lenders do talk to each other too, so you may end up getting blacklisted if you did this several times. So definitely not something that we would advise. Bridging finance. Now, bridging is a specialist type of short-term finance, normally intended to be borrowed for between six to 12 months. This is a great tool for this strategy, but also can be quite risky because bridging isn't cheap and you'll be paying interest monthly. So if for any reason things overrun, then it can start to get very expensive indeed. You could also look at a specialist mortgage. So it's possible to get a mortgage where the lender gives you a loan based on the original purchase price, then agrees to advance you funds based on its new value once you've finished your refurb. These mortgages are harder to come by and they'll typically want to see proof that you can do this, perhaps by looking at past projects that you've done. Quick note, you'll typically have to wait six months after purchase before you can move mortgages. And this is to make it harder for people to launder their money through property. So now you have an idea of different ways you can finance your purchase. Take the quiz to cement your learning and move on to the next module. To get this strategy working well for us, we'll need to get good at adding value to properties. Although refurbishing a property is the main way of adding value, it certainly isn't the only way. You could add, also add value by extending the lease, solving a structural problem, solving a legal problem, getting planning permission in place, and there are many others too. The key to this strategy is recognising a property with a problem that needs solving, or just seeing the potential in a property that others may have overlooked. By far the most popular way is to refurbish a property, and you may have heard the term BRR, which stands for Buy, Refurbish and Refinance. Let's look at how the process of BRR works in more detail. First up, identify a suitable property. This is all about finding a property with potential. So perhaps it's the worst house on the street that's just in need of some TLC. Work out its possible end value. You can do this by looking at the local market, ideally within a quarter of a mile. What have properties like this but in a good condition sold for? The more recent, the better too. This end value will become your target value for the property. Now we work backwards from your target. So let's say the end target is 200K. If you can force your property to be worth 200K too, you should be able to take a mortgage of 150K against it. Now work out your total costs. Refurb 20,000 pounds, finance two and a half thousand, legal cost two and a half thousand, leaving you with a total cost of 25K. If you now deduct your total costs from your potential mortgage, it leaves you with a figure of 125K. This figure is your target purchase cost. You now know that if you can buy that property for 125k, you'll have the potential to refurbish it, refinance it and get all of your money back out. Next up, we want to buy the property. So it's time to negotiate. Remember your target price. If you end up paying above that figure, you'll struggle to refinance all of your capital back out. Now the work comes, it's refurbishing your property. So let's do that work. 
now we want to refinance the property. So you'll now be able to apply for a new mortgage and if everything goes your way, you'll have all of the money back out that you started with. And repeat, you can now do this over and over again. So in practice, it isn't going to be easy to recycle all of your funds back out of the property. As you can see, to do this would require you to get the property at the perfect purchase price, keep it within budget on the refurbishment and on the time scale. In reality, if you can get at least some of your capital back out, then at least you have that to go into your pot of cash for your next investment. To cement your understanding of this module, take the quiz before moving on to the next one. Now we have a good understanding about how to execute this strategy, it's time to find a property and get going. And there are several places to find property. Yeah, the first place you might look is Rightmove. Rightmove is an excellent tool for finding properties. You can use the keyword tool to include things like in need of modernization or development potential in your search criteria. There's a link to a video below which shows you how to make the most out of Rightmove. Estate agents, it's important to build strong relationships with the agents in your local area. Make yourself as attractive to them as possible. And by that, I don't mean dressing up nicely for them. Prove to them that you have your deposit ready. Show them that you have a mortgage agreed in principle. Also, you may want to use the same agent to let and manage your property once you've done the work. If they are aware of all of this, then you'll be in an ideal buyer for them. So chances are, you'll be the first person to get a call if something good comes up. You may also want to look at auctions. Auctions can be a great place to find properties that need improving, as this is the go-to place for people to get rid of problem properties. You can get properties for a great price here, but be careful not to get carried away with the bidding. And also, bear in mind, you will usually have 28 days to complete, so make sure you've got your finances in place first. Auctions have become really popular in recent years, so don't think you'll always get a deal at one. And if you're struggling to find a property yourself, you could simply use a sourcer. If you're struggling to find property for yourself or you simply don't have the time, then maybe a sourcer could be the way forward. They will obviously charge you a fee for the service, but if you factor in the cost of using the sourcer, then they can be an excellent route to getting a deal done. Now, let's cement your learning with a quiz before moving on to the next module. As with any property investment strategy, you should try to account for the potential risks. This isn't the easiest strategy and there are many points at which things can go wrong. The first way you can go wrong is by overpaying at the beginning. It's really hard to find a property at the right price, so it can be very easy to end up overpaying for the property. Once you've calculated your top price you can pay, it's important you try to stick to this. Anything above that price is obviously going to make this an uphill battle for you. You're also going to want to keep to budget on the refurb. There is so much to do and so many unforeseen things that can crop up during the refurb process. It's easy for cost to spiral. As a rule of thumb, you may want to allow for 20% contingency budget in your costs for the refurb. The market could also turn for you. Renovating a property will take time. It's likely going to take the very least six months before you're refinancing it. A lot can happen in that time, so if the market does take a turn for the worse, it could potentially wipe out all of the value you've added yourself. And you're also going to want to move this property onto a mortgage once you've finished the work. You'll need to move across to a mortgage, otherwise you could be stuck with all your cash in the deal or on an expensive bridging loan. Hopefully there will be mortgage options available to you, so it's important to make sure you are still mortgageable. Not missing payments on things and not making any sudden changes to your financial or employment situation will certainly help. And then we need to account for void periods. As with any buy to let investment, you should allow for potential void periods. It's quite typical to have two months rent held aside to allow for this. Now it's time to cement your learning on this with a quick quiz. 